The question I wanted to ask you, because your company is working on, you know, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, and while COVID-19 is like, seems like the most important disease that we need to tackle right now, we know that Alzheimer's and Parkinson's are hugely important. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about what fundraising has been like during this current pandemic? Because you still need to raise funds to hopefully get those therapies uh, through trials and hopefully successful into market. Yeah, uh, great question. Uh, at Thera, we had a very strong 2019. And going into JP Morgan, we were on a super high. And so a lot of traction uh, and uh, interest in, in the work that we're doing because we have a very innovative approach to targeting Alzheimer's. And we have exciting data that our CMO presented at CTAD in Alzheimer's subjects. So we have very innovative uh, data plus approach. So that was a very unique position for Athera since uh, I'm sure everyone heard about the A-beta amyloid uh, track record in this uh, field and, 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 and having a very innovative technology with positive data in Alzheimer's uh, patients and achieved all of our milestones. Really, we were in a super high at JP Morgan, um, which continued uh, until the market crashed due to COVID. But what I would say is I'm super impressed by the investors in this industry. Of course, we had to give them time. I think as a private company, we had to be realistic at that point that we are competing with a public market that's on sale, if I want to be simplify uh, right. the conversation. Uh, but the intrinsic value, what I've noticed from the investors is that they noticed that the intrinsic value of developing a, an innovative technology and potentially providing true solutions for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, uh, Parkinson's patients, we didn't lose that. So the interest was there. We just needed to be realistic, give some time to the investor to digest what's going on and define the new norm. Um, and, and, you know, that wasn't a, a comfortable period for us from a super high to silence, I would say. But then, you know, after two, three weeks when at least the industry, uh, the life science industry started to show some uh, normalization and definition of the new norm, uh, things picked up. Um, and uh, I would say Zoom has been a savior for us because we've uh, moved from uh, conversations with investors, face-to-face uh, -face meeting into a Zoom platform which has been, you know, initially it was awkward. You're trying to figure things out and now it's very natural. And, and, and um, you know, we're, we're, I would say we're doing well uh, at Ethereum at this point. Three weeks ago, I, I was having many heart attacks and all of that, but today it's, uh, it's been, today we're doing very well. And, and I'm, I'm very excited about the, the, the next phase and, and the initiation of our phase three clinical trial in the second half of this year. You know, I'm curious if anybody else wants to jump in and maybe talk about some of the differences between, you know, virtual pitching versus, you know, pitching in person where, you know, uh, have you noticed anything that doesn't work as well virtually versus when you're able to do a presentation at BioCEO and have a Q&A? Can I start with this since I've been doing a lot of these and then... Uh... The, I would say the value of being in the room with the investors is that you could read the room and focus on the area where you see that the body language changed in a positive way and try to address, because not, not everything is verbalized in these uh, meetings. Sometimes it's just they keep it to themselves. Um, but I think both us and the investors are getting comfortable. Uh, at the beginning of the pitching, investors didn't want to have a video on, uh, but that's moving, shifting because we are putting our video and we are comfortable being there. At the beginning, we had the video, they didn't have the video. And I think that now investors in shifting into also having this video interaction is, is improving, but it's a process, you know? And we've seen a lot of successful roadshow, virtual roadshow and IPOs in this uh, nuclear winter, if you want to call it that way. And uh, I think it's it's shifting the industry and the whole approach that we have into a more efficient uh, path. But I, I miss the human I, I, interaction. I, 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 would, I would echo that. I, I think this is something maybe to kind of the Zoom fatigue that you mentioned, Rob, that in general, the video helps a huge amount, right? You can actually see people, you can, there's some sentiment that you can feel by just 
seeing someone, but you you don't get everything, right? There's, you still don't quite get the same from the, the, the personal interaction. And uh, we're also fundraising. Uh, we've had, you know, very similar experience. And, um, you know, I, overall, we, we, I think net we haven't found, you know, a significant dip in the process. It's more about having patience, first of all, that, you know, I, I think empathetically, everyone is going through the same thing that you are personally at home, right? You're trying to figure out if you've got kids, you know, the homeschooling, you're trying to figure out how do, how do I get my groceries? Where do I find my flour? And, and then from the investor perspective, they're generally dealing with at least one, if not two things. The first is that they're dealing with their current portfolio companies. And many of those are experiencing a lot of very significant issues that is a bit of, bit of forcing them to spend a huge amount of, a disproportionate amount of time with those companies compared to normal. And so you have to be patient, right? They're dealing with a lot of complex issues that are not like the issues that we're all talking about now. So that's the first thing. The second thing is if you're dealing with an investor who has public market exposure, that's of course, you know, a major, you know, going to be a major uh, um, consumption of, of their time. So patience is really important, right? Patience and empathy, just stand in their shoes for a little bit. And so it's just, it's, it's, it's slowing down the process. Um, but in general, we found, uh, you know, there's still good engagement. Investors still, they, they exactly, as we said, they still want to, they, they're still looking for innovation. They still, their appetite to invest, their appetite to be part of um, biopharma innovation is still exactly the same. So we haven't really seen that change. It's just, it's a, it's a little bit slower. And then the video, there was definitely, in fact, I think there still is this, you know, who, who does and doesn't switch on their video. But I, I've actually found that, even in situations where your counterparts in meetings don't switch on the video, it does make a difference. I always switch it on no matter what. Like, it's always there. I'm there. People can see me. And even if you can't see them, it still makes a difference. And it's, it's sort of, it's having the courage to switch it on. Um, you know, and I think once everyone, or once you get over that and you make that decision and say, I'm going to switch it on no matter what, even if your counterparts don't in the meeting, at least they can see you. They take something away from that. And I think that's important. So that, that's, that's our experience. Very, very, very similar though. And at the risk of being flipped, we, we've had investors who did not have their video on. We were at a banking conference a few weeks ago. And so we had kind of back, back to back meetings. I mean, as a public company, that's what you do. But um, where, and the default position was, I'm not turning on my video. And we encourage people to turn on their videos. And after some of them turned them on, we wish we had not encouraged them to turn them on. But that's... <laughs> <laughs> That's the nature of uh, working from home, I guess. Um, but it, it, anyway, I think that uh, I would I echo the comments made by uh, Lean and Carolyn. It, it is, a, I think, overall a very effective way to interact. It's not the same as being in person, but um, you can have excellent discussions. Um, I think particularly with people who you've um, met with before, so you're building on a relationship. It's a little tougher, I think, to create a relationship over Zoom, um, it can be done, but I think it's just a different animal. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think the, the yeah. other thing that this is teaching me at least is uh, we've got some business development discussions ongoing right now, um, but uh, you really have to learn to be patient across the board here with this situation we're in. I mean, our mm -hmm. programs aren't moving as rapidly as I'd want them to move. Our business development discussions aren't moving as rapidly as I'd want them to move. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm pleased to say that I'm not the most patient person in the world, but I have been able to adjust to this new reality. And uh, I think uh, everyone recognizes, as this was said earlier, that we've all got other stuff to worry about at the same time, about getting your groceries in or things like that. And it might seem trivial, but in actual fact, uh, you do pay a little bit more attention to uh, planning, I think. And... Um, that's another thing I think that we're learning, at least our company, that planning can make a huge difference. And we're using this mm -hmm. as an opportunity also to take time to, to plan forward, which is bringing a bit more discipline into the company as well. But mm -hmm. number one word I think I've heard from everybody is patience. Mm -hmm. Our first, our but, first, but um, was... go ahead, Rachel. Go ahead. Our first, um, one of our first calls with investor, potential investor, uh, when this whole thing started, maybe the first a couple of days where everyone was on lockdown, 
we we got on our Zoom conference call, and and this this um, investor, this woman was in is in Boston, and she shared with us. She said, "I'm doing this call from my bathroom because I I am trying to find my two year old and my nanny." So this vision of her sitting in her bathroom trying to talk to us. She did not turn on the video, um, and and trying to figure out how to you know just how to even manage. And I think people have gotten much more organized, and they kind of can, can do it. But in the beginning, it was. It was a real learning experience. We've had several more conversations with her. I think she's out of the bathroom. Um, <laughs> but she was very engaged. She was very engaged, I have to say. Mm -hmm. So there you have it.